It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Yo, man. Oh, Miss Rusty, what's up, everyone? It is Friday. Whatever that means to you, it is Friday. Uh, it might be Saturday somewhere in the world. I'm not quite sure exactly how the time zone works. I am used to being, I don't know, on some other time zone. And time zones and time are irrelevant anyway, because it's whenever this time is that it says is what time it is. So, but then it's not. So anyway, so thank you guys for being here uh, at the Public Access Podcast, the P podcast here on the Quantum Global Broadcasting Network, QGBN. I'm your host, Rusty Diamond. You guys can call in if you like, 503-974-6420. Leave a message. Maybe you don't like leaving messages and you're like, Gotta be all on the fly here, brother. Uh, there's no editing, you guys. This is what makes this show. There's no editing. It's all on the fly. So if something happens, it happens, and we get real. And so speaking of getting real, I'm going to reel you back in here. And I'm going to bring on my special guest right here, right now. And my special guest today is Katrina Nomi. There she is. How are you doing? Hi, thank you. I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? Excellent. I'm, I'm doing great as well. I can't complain about today. It's, uh, you know, another, another day to do a podcast. So, uh, you know, get, get to enjoy that. And I'm lighter on them this month than I usually am. So, uh, I get to enjoy it more. I feel like I, I went too much. And I was doing too many for a while. And then I started, mm -hmm. there were some that weren't quite up to what I wanted to have. So learned right. my lesson, uh, weeded through <laughs> some people a little better and uh, got to something that I'm I'm happy with. So uh, so where awesome. is it? Where is it you are in the world? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, so I'm in Denmark. I'm in Copenhagen. Okay. Are are you like right in Copenhagen or are you in the Copenhagen area? I'm in the middle of Copenhagen, so like right in the center. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Are you are you from there then? Or uh you just did you move there or what's your Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, Denmark is a really, really small country. <laughs> right. So I grew up minutes from the city center. Um, so I'm not from the city, but I spent my, my entire youth in there. And, you know, I know my way around. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely where I come from. Okay. And then, so then, is it pretty easy then for you to go to, I mean, like, where where do you go when you go on uh on holiday and stuff is that you usually go somewhere or you tend to stay somewhere around that area or do you go somewhere warmer um now that it's november i'm starting to think about warmer places a little bit here and there yeah also because denmark is like 80 mm, percent rain <laughs> throughout yeah, the I, year and then you know sun and a bit of warmth um I know how that goes. so yeah usually Either I go to a summer house, like a bit up north in Denmark. That's where I really find my peace and quiet. But otherwise, it's really not, there's not this like one place I go to. Uh, obviously, Europe is easier to travel to because it's just the proximity is closer. Um, usually, I think the, the, the place I've spent the most time must be London. Okay, where it's uh, about as rainy. Yep, the same, just like three degrees warmer, and that's it. It's the same. 
So then, okay. So if you have a, so I'm, I'm mostly, I grew up in uh, near Portland, Oregon over like, uh, you know, like what on the Pacific ocean, kind yeah, of the, yeah. the exact same weather, the 80% yeah. of the time it's raining. And yeah. No, Portland once actually. Oh, okay. What what did you do out in Portland? Well, it was raining, so we <laughs> we went inside. <laughs> okay. But it's the cutest, the cutest place. It had all these like um stands with like food courts, and I really liked Portland. I was only there for like a couple of hours, I think, but really cute place, I think. From what you I got saw, got the you got the food carts. That's about uh that's. That's a good way to experience Portland, uh, getting that part. Awesome. So, I mean, yeah. with it being rainy a lot of the time, um, do you feel that you're able to do more creative stuff, or you're, you know, are you doing more stuff than, or uh, I guess it, you know, inside work? Is your inside work different than if you were? in a place where you know it's sunny I, i've lived in a place where it was sunny and i felt like my my inside work and creativity kind of it didn't die but it was it was a lot harder to be able to get into that zone for a while and start creating yeah you know i i actually it's funny because i thought about that today um because so much of the time it's so cloudy and it's like gray weather but and whenever it's sunny like like if there's like just one little inch of sunshine everybody in Denmark is outside yeah. um so I definitely think and that also affects us uh in the way we spend time inside I like I spent way more time like getting cozy if that makes sense not being unproductive but like you know I just I'm a bit more like slow in what I do when the weather is like rainy and cloudy and dark. It's like yeah, you get this cozy vibe that you just don't have. I, I get what you say. Like it doesn't die the creativity, but it's different. It's like another vibe. I don't really know like how to explain yeah. it. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something a little different. I, I feel like there's a lot more. You can just kind of get into like a more of a, a chill, chill kind of yeah. a vibe. I mean, you're in there, you have your, you know, you got a blanket on you or something, uh, you know, drinking some hot drink and just uh -huh. able to kind of relax and, uh, you know, make <laughs> what you make. Yeah, exactly. And I also think like a lot of the creativity also comes from, the things we do besides our work so like when we spend time with a friend we get some kind of epiphany or you know when we take a walk outside or when we run or do something different and I think a lot of that also at least from where I'm from we I see more people when it's good weather because it's just easier to make a meetup it's easier to like in Copenhagen we walk to everything so like we would just oh. walk 10 minutes and we would meet each other at the middle of the the city but if it's raining, you don't do that in the same way. And I think a lot of the creativity is actually sparked from that as well, like yeah. social uh, events, you know, and and that kind of lowers down as well during this this season. So do you do creative uh, endeavors with your friends? Uh, or are you created by yourself or how's that work for you? So I am um, mostly... You know, if I'm supposed to, if I'm really creating something, I'm by myself. Uh, I like to take walks. That's where I really, like, when I'm in nature, I really get creative. Like, um, just standing in the middle of woods, I don't know why, I just get this sensational feeling of just epiphanies and downloads and, you know, things just come to me. Um, whereas when I'm with my friends, it's more like just hanging out and having interesting conversations, but that can also create some creative endeavors. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm a big fan of the the walks for creativity walks for, especially like you said, in the woods, get out in the woods somehow and walk mm -hmm. around there. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've had some times where I've, yeah, 
very in the I guess it was still like flip flip phone camera phone video like I, I got lost one time walking around and like I had a video camera and I, or quote unquote a video camera thing and I you know I was able like okay all this stuff was just coming to me because you know I'm out walking or even just you know walking in city um and then so do you when you have your ideas do you remember them do you have to write them down in something or your phone or like a notebook or something or what do you I'm like in, doing with I'm that um i you know think i have i'm a notebook girl cool i like it <laughs> i i think i have because when i put things on my phone they don't stick in the same way and they disappear and they go into the cloud and i don't understand it and it's yeah it just gets lost when i'm when i like write down on a technology like a technical device yeah um so i think i have like 10 notebooks and i'm very like structured so i have notebooks for different things um but i always have at least three on me like in my bag oh. somewhere or just paper that i just pull up wherever i am if i get something i'm like gotta write it down because i'll forget it and you know, most of the time I don't even look at it again, but just the fact of writing it down makes me remember and makes me look at it in a different way. And yeah, you know, just formulating it into into actual words and not just having it in your mind. I think that's a lot of the the creativity, like getting it out in that way. Yeah. And I think they're writing it down as opposed to you putting it in like a note in your phone uh, or, you know, something like that. Like it just has a different uh like i don't know like when, when they tell people to do you journaling or writing a, a diary kind of a thing or whatever like they don't yeah. tell you to go and write it on a phone they 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 have you get a notebook because it has that like you're actually i don't know i feel like maybe putting the letters and stuff down like with your hand as opposed to just pushing something a little button or not even a button i guess a part of a screen makes it <laughs> not stick as well and like not not really be able to get it out of your head and you know onto something else I feel like it doesn't really get that full transition if you're not writing it in a in a you know piece of paper or something like using a pen and paper do you have a special yeah. pen then no I have like 30 pens as well um because I lose them and then I give them to people and then I take someone else's pen and, you know, it. no special pens. <laughs> so, but then you have three notebooks. What are the three notebooks usually? Are they different uh, Yeah. for different um, topics or projects? Yeah. So currently I have one that's like for just random because I like to write, like, as I said, everything down so I like to write random stuff down that doesn't make any sense but I'm too structured so I don't want it to be in one of the books where I actually have a theme like so I have a, a, a book for random stuff like or a notebook for random stuff where I'm just like epiphanies thoughts things I've learned aha moments uh people I've met networking just everything random and then I can just sort it out into the others um yeah. so that's one of them that's also the loose paper that I can just throw out again because I don't need to look at it. Um, and then I have one for, uh, you know, I have a couple of different coaches that I use and I have one like personal coaching book that I write down like tools and tricks and lessons or things like that, that I, that I like learn with or do with my coaches. Um, and then I have, one at the moment I the one I take with me as well is my like uh what do you call that like kind of manifestation book where I write down the scenarios that I really want to happen um same as it being my kind of strategy book so like writing down really like detailed plans of what's gonna happen and how I'm gonna do it and how it's gonna fold out uh yeah. so those are my kind of three books that I keep with me right now <laughs> So in any of those, well, I guess with the one of them, the one that's the 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 loose one, the loose paper and the miscellaneous, everything else, does that one yeah. probably get read the most? Because then you have to go and transfer it in, like read back over 
do you have to transfer it into other books or do those other books do you feel like either of them get reread or just are, are sort of in there just to get out of your head yeah so that's that's uh exactly like it the the one that's the random stuff is definitely one that I I go through because I know that like 90% of it I'm not going to use but I know that 10% is just like gold nuggets that I wrote down that I need to implement some way so I always like go through that one and you're so right the other ones I didn't even think about that but I don't go through them I just I write things down and then I'm I'm done with it I'm I'm over it I write them something new <laughs> yeah yeah and so I mean when you write it down does it leave your head or does it do you kind of still think about it or do you do you think that into you know other projects or do you have to ever look back and go like I wonder if I have this back here somewhere uh, or you know do the same thing in your head yeah you know it kind of depends on what it is if it's something that I like a tool or a technique or Mm, an event or a person something that I want to learn or like I want to implement I really uh, make an effort in speaking about it because that way I like train it in my brain I get used to what it's about I get used to formulating it I get used to teaching it to others if that's what it's about um, so if it's something that I know I'm going to use I really try to make an effort to like just I would just call someone and be like, you got to hear about this thing that I just learned because that helps me actually, uh, you know, go through it one more time and just make it stick in another way. So it doesn't just disappear from from everything, like out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Yeah. And then with yeah. that, I mean, it's like the, the teaching. When you teach it, that's when you usually know what the best you're able to go and, you know, or tell someone about it. Um, usually the way you remember things the most but and not always but for the most part that usually works out pretty well being able to do that and yeah uh, yeah get it out uh yeah hopefully sure. yeah ho hopefully everything works with that and so then um what what happens i mean then once you fill up the book where does the book go does the book stay or is the book does it go into the uh, the trash uh, or recycle? I don't know. If the, I don't know. What, you know, if recycling or whatever is. Uh, I don't know if it's a thing yeah. here, really. Even I don't know if it's a thing there. It's not. <laughs> they say it is, but everything and it kind of ends up in the landfill. I feel like, but yeah, no, I feel it's the same here. You know, we do it, but I don't know the the effect of it. But um, I think that's kind of like I wouldn't say one of my issues but I I have a hard time some things I just get rid of like the loose paper but that, that there's also a reason I keep it on loose paper because I don't want to have loose paper just lying around so I throw it out because it's messy um but I tend to hold on it's not to a lot of things but my notes that I don't know why but I feel like what if there's something in one of the notes that I missed or like I'm going to go back to one day? Um, so I actually keep it all. But some of it, I like if I have something, if, for example, like I wrote something down of something that happened, something I achieved or something like that. And I wrote down like how I felt, how it was, the the whole memory thing or something just nice or good to to remember. I I have this little box that I pull out the paper from the notebook and I put it in that box because that's like I know if 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 it comes down to it that's what I'm going to keep and that's what actually you know truly means something and that's what sparked uh some very strong emotions with me that yeah you know make me yeah make me like care for it more than uh, than just all of it but I keep it all anyways <laughs> so where, where do you do you have a spot uh, is it starting to like do you have like a closet you open up and everything just sort of falls out of there every time you have to kind of push it all back up into there every time you you open it up and throw another one in there and just try to shut the the closet yeah oh my god we're almost there I mean uh, currently it's like 
<clears throat> in a big uh, bed roller. Okay. Uh, but it's it's piling up, and <laughs> I don't. I think I'm gonna have to move it to my uh, my um, my loft room soon. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know what I'm gonna do when when that's gonna gonna start piling up. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got that, and I was like, well, cause yeah, like I have stuff at um. I I ended up with a bunch of that, and I have it at my mom's place back in you know, Portland, and uh, I'm on the other side of the country, and so it's just like, well, maybe I'll see that stuff someday. But and I was like, you gotta come get this stuff. I'm like, ah, I don't have anywhere to put it right now. Like, I only have you keep it. Only have this much space. <laughs> you keep it, but I can't get rid of it now. But it's like, so you know, a little bit of a back and forth on that one, but. Yeah, you know, what 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 you gonna do? And then, so, uh, with the writing, then are are you gearing yourself towards going towards a book or anything, or is a book already in the works? And if you are writing a book, are you gonna? Because there's always like, if you write a book, you always have the option of you have all those notes. You can just photocopy those notes and make that into a book too. Just oh, yeah. the notes as is. Don't have to do anything. <laughs> uh, is that, that something is the... you're going towards? Um, you know, I always, I've always loved writing. Like ever since I was a little child, I just like in school when we had like essays and stuff like that, I would just be in my zone writing weird like weird ass stories but I would just love it so I've always had this like love for putting um things down into words and creating stories and communicating um in writing so <laughs> to answer your question yes I am actually writing a book um it's very like it's taking shape uh so I don't I can't I'm kind of like getting a sense now of what it's going to be for and what it's going to be about but I literally just started writing uh I think that was last year and I just I felt like I need I don't know why but I need to tell people about certain things and I don't know who these people are and I don't know why and I don't know how it's going to form but I am I am in the middle I'd say of writing a book um yeah and it's it's a fun process because it's all about being creative and also a lot of my notes are like oh for the book I'm gonna you know do this and then this is a good exercise and blah 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 and you know it's just it's just a fun little side thing that I have have going on that you know really like speaks to my heart and you know keeps things fun and yeah light and just how I like it so would this be a, like a fiction book or a nonfiction book or like a workbook? Because uh, if you ever low on pages on a workbook kind of a book, there's always you can put in blank pages or you know pages with a uh, line line paper. Uh, here, do it yeah. do it on your own and uh, make that book a little bit thicker. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what 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 kind that's... of book are you going for? So I'm going for an art fiction book. Um, as I see it right now, it's going to take, it's going to form into, you know, a book, not, not a book like a teach, a schooling book, but like a self-help book kind of vibe. Um, okay. So based on experiences, based on uh, science, based on a lot of different things. And yeah, just, uh, something for people to resonate with um yeah so definitely non-fiction i i don't know when i lost that but i i don't really write the weird stories anymore maybe i should <laughs> maybe that would make a good book for for young kids i don't know <laughs> um but this one is a non-fiction yeah and i mean so then are you gonna go with the publish it yourself uh you know amazon kind of deal or are you gonna go and you know get it to a publisher and go that way uh 
Have you thought about that part yet? Have you got that? Yeah. Like jumping um, ahead too much. <laughs> I've thought about it. I haven't come that far, but from what I'm hearing is that it is a lot of work or it can be a lot of work to publish it yourself because there's just so much that you need to be aware of. Um, yeah. So I think I would get, get it done through, uh, through some form of publishing. Um, but I'm not, I, I didn't think more about it actually. Um, yeah. If you, Amazon's know. not that difficult. It's, uh, it's not no, and then you also, the thing I like about that is that you can buy physical copies, but you don't have to, you know, buy a bunch of them and then hope, hope you, you know, you're moving them fast, uh, you know, yeah. more of a print on demand thing. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know, but then yeah, having a publisher and having someone to go and be able to market it and do all that stuff would be a, a nice perk of it too. And maybe publishers in the future are going to be more print on demand publishing. I think that would be the yeah. smart thing to do if I was a publisher. I, I don't know. So, I mean, what are bookstores like? Uh, I mean, uh, there's still a lot of bookstores. There's one in, back to Portland. There's one in Portland that's pretty well known but i mean uh bookstores are i don't know like i i'd be i think i'd be happier to get my book in a library than a bookstore but uh i don't know i'm not sure uh, you know i don't know either i i i rarely go into bookstores just because of the convenience of either i you know i actually i really like i like physical books but i I like listening to books because then I can do other stuff at the same time. Um, yeah. So just for the convenience, I always buy them online. Um, even if I have to go like buy a physical book, I buy it online because I'm not sure which book, book, book shop will have it. Uh, kind of like the idea of a library as well, actually. Do you have any, you don't have any, you don't have any books like uh, yourself? No, uh, I made one, but it's only like in uh, it's a kid's book, but it's uh, it it is what it is. Um, and I did that recently, but you know, it's like I don't know. I I would like to write some more and have like I like to go into a library. I mean, I mean, you know, I feel like I go into a library more than I go into a bookstore. Mm. Um, right now it's weird so where I live my library is under construction and they moved the library into the shopping mall so it's in there with like all the department stores and stuff there's just a library in the middle of that which is kind of weird but uh, <laughs> first time first time I've seen a library inside of a, a, yeah. a mall but um, yeah you can see them separate right yeah but I don't know. It'd be cool to do that. And so you were saying with your book, you like having it be in the audio version. So if you were making your nonfiction slash workbook, would you want to narrate it too? Or would you have somebody else narrate it? Or would it be narratable? I don't know if that's a word, but uh, <laughs> I guess that's what books are for. <laughs> yeah. You know, I... Mm... I don't know. I kind of like when it's the author, especially when I'm listening to like books from people. I don't know if that sounds weird, but from people who have passed away and it's their voice because you kind of get, I feel like you get the, the true story more than if someone else would read it because that person actually knows like, okay, so this happened that time. And, you know, you can feel it in a different way. So I kind of like that. Um, I didn't really think about like, I actually had to be doing that as well. Uh, yeah, but no, I, I kind of like the authenticity of the author having narrated it. Yeah. What do yeah. you think? Would you choose? I'm, I'm all for that. Like, I, I, I really like the idea of 
I don't want to say I like the idea of someone dying, but you know, no. someone when, when they die and then still having their book um, read in their own words, like, and that's something I don't even think that you could. Like, I, I know you can replicate most anything with AI, and um, yeah. but I don't know if that part, like, you can make it sound like that person, yeah. but I don't know if you'd get, like, the, the little small nuances that happen because the person is experiencing what they had written, whereas I don't know if AI could really pick up maybe it maybe it can and uh at some point but um i don't know yeah, i no, feel that I, that's pretty important yeah because that was that is what makes the difference right because that person the author actually knows those little moments um yeah they start yeah. talking about something that's like a, a strong memory and then you know maybe they mm -hmm. hear them get choked up or something for a second when they're Reading like, oh wait, yeah. what? Why? What's up with that? But whereas someone else who's reading it just sort of, even if they have yeah. tons of theatrics while they're reading it, still kind of yeah, yeah. glosses over that part. Doesn't have the same experience. So exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's the whole different part of it. The um, because I feel a lot of the time the narrators that you know when you write when you uh, read a book out loud you say some words wrong or you get it out wrong um and i i'm like i can't figure out if it bothers me when they don't pronounce the things right or like they get a sentence wrong or if i actually kind of like it because it makes it more humane in some kind of way do you know what i mean yeah yeah i know what you mean and i mean i think that could yeah, I can see it going either way with that. Like, uh, especially if you know the book and you're like, oh, well, because you're not like, re are you reading along with it when you're doing this, uh, when you're listening to it? Or are you just listening to it? And so, I mean, you might not know if they if they mess up. You might not have any clue. And it's just uh, as long as they don't make it known that, oh, I fucked up. Um, you know, just uh, they just keep going. Only they would know. And yeah. so, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, like even some of that stuff, like for, you know, reading, you know, for like auditions or reading stuff like that, like trying to get every word right. And as long as you kind of get most of it, but, uh, you yeah. know, I'm not, I'm not good with auditions. So uh, the whole rem remembering all that stuff isn't something that's. That's a plus for me. But now, uh, if, if anyone has ever wanted to book me for anything, don't listen to this. But uh, I think <laughs> I've got it figured out now. Now that I have long hair, uh, it'd be very easy for me to take these wireless head, these earbuds, stick it in and just say this stuff and then leave like a however, you know, then just you know, say it again, quiet, like don't say it so I can say it out loud and then say the next line and then stay quiet for that again. And then, uh, so if you ever see me doing some public speaking thing, that's probably what I'm going to be doing. If that's I, if it's happens. not something, what's that? Yeah. No. So always keep the hair, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't let the hair go. Even if there's like nothing up here, it'll still, I'll still make sure I have plenty of hair here on the side just to cover my ears or I'll start being like a guy who wears a, uh, wears hats or something or you know uh, earmuffs or, or <laughs> oh, earmuffs. oh my god yeah just wear oh, earmuffs yeah. everywhere i go be the earmuff guy or uh, <laughs> so someone has to be but i mean someone i like be yeah i like being able to go and wing it though but some places uh you can't really wing it and so uh something I but like with a podcast like a podcast isn't a, a perfect, like read from. <laughs> I mean, it can be, uh, but like this one is is not this a uh, say whatever kind of a thing, and it just it goes. But uh, yeah, but you have a podcast though too, which is it 
more that way uh your podcast or what what's your podcast about yeah um so my podcast is really about um bridging a gap between spiritual techniques uh the way they're used in like more eastern societies and you know bridging that gap into like more western societies and ways of living and just you know so my focus I have a focus on it being like from a spiritual perspective um not that I'm trying to force anything down upon anyone um but that's like I have a main like area of focus where I go and then I interview people who who are in line with that and but but I really like just the conversation to flow and see what comes through um because I feel that if you try to control the conversation too much it becomes just too forced and you can feel it and it's not it's just not genuine and and that's not you know as we're doing here like it's just more casual and what comes through is just like it's authentic and it's real it's just not people trying to pretend something or trying to force something go through so I like it being like loose and just see where things go and just have fun with it really it's all about having fun anyways right yeah and like I've never written down a question for any of my guests ever like it would throw me off and I'd end up like going back like oh yeah by the way so uh oh, yeah we should have talked about that 30 minutes ago <laughs> and you know it exactly. disrupts the flow of whatever's whatever's happening and um yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it's it's important to be able to get that. And so then then with your podcast, then so like are your guests um when they come on, like are they are you doing Zoom or are you are they in person or you do you have yeah. a, a studio somewhere set up? Mm, uh, I do it over Zoom as well. Um okay. you should the people that I interview are not from Denmark. Um, I've, for some reason, everything I do has nothing to do with Danish people, <laughs> but people from everywhere else, literally. Uh, so it's always over Zoom. Um, so I don't have a studio. I just have my microphone and my uh, computer and that's it really. And I think it's so nice as well that you can connect uh, so easily uh, with people that live like across the world like you and I do or like just different societies or cultures and you can just connect in an instant and you know find each other I love that yeah I mean uh so like the one that seems the furthest away is like people who live in uh like Australia or New Zealand is uh, seems like that's the one where it's always I have to get some weird time of the day to you know meet up with them to you know yeah. do a to do a show but then it would probably take 24 hours each way of travel to get here yeah. to me and to be able to just hop on two three minutes and you're good to go I mean that's yeah. invaluable I think I, I don't think I could pay for people to travel you know all the way across the world to come do yeah you know an <laughs> interview with me like it's, it's nice that you can get like people from all over and it made it a lot easier and um, yeah and like yeah like with yeah. my business it's great like I and plus you get to be in a place that's comfortable which is yeah you're not going to some place you're unfamiliar and like oh this isn't my normal place you can't go in well you can you can walk in with your slippers and your your bathrobe and your your blanket if you want to and a cup of uh hot tea or something but you know if you want to you can do that but you can just yeah be in your own comfortable place and yeah be fine uh yeah i yeah. i'm happy that zoom became a thing like a big thing and it mm -hmm. it was hard getting people to do zoom for a while but uh, now it's kind of the standard which is cool and 
Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. all for it. That's so true. And I really like um yeah, you know, just the fact that we can always also like it's not limited in terms of the people you can interview as well, right? You can like if there's someone in Australia, you can you can just, you know, contact them and be like, hey, you wanna be on and and that's just yeah, I, I really think that's like kind of magical because we really get to connect in a different way and get to like have deep conversations with people that we just would never ever meet in like in real life or how yeah. you want to say it. Right. Yeah. And so. Just be and being so easy to be able to contact them. Like uh, like you see someone that has a a video of them doing something cool that resonates with you and you just reach out and you're like oh hey and because i mean yeah. i mean before it was pretty hard like you know if we tried 20 30 years ago trying to do that trying to figure out uh i mean one you have to call super long distance or you know write a letter that's gonna be take forever to get there and get back and then you also have to you know hope that it gets there and then also be able to find the address or the phone number, but now it's just you could just boom, 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 or however you you type on your your yeah. thing, uh, and just yeah, get right to it, and it's yeah, it's pretty cool. It, you're able to just yeah, get all kinds of different people, and um, mm. yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah, me too. I love it. <laughs> and so then, uh. So how often are you doing your podcast? Is it like a weekly show or something or somewhere around there or whenever? Um, as of right now, it's bi-weekly. Okay. Um, so I started okay. doing it on a weekly basis, but it's not like my main uh, area of focus. And it was still like, I was still like, it was still taking form. Um, so I, I, I just... I spend too much time on it compared to what I really, really needed to be doing. Um, so it's as of right now, it's bi-weekly. Um, but I, I really, I try to not keep it like too strict in terms of when I uh, launch an episode because I also really need to keep it fun for me. I know that might sound selfish, but... Um, nope. Nope. <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it. I yeah, I gotta have it when I wanna do it. And yeah. That's it. So you, you you gotta like if it's too much as yeah, as you said, like if it gets too much, it's just you gotta find that balance on like how does it fit you and you don't have to make it fit into like what's normal or what's like what the other people are doing like it's oh it has to be every friday and then you also have to do one on mondays and then there's an extra and you know all of these yeah. things like if that doesn't fit your like way of living and way of doing it it's just it's okay and you you can just do it your way that's that's perfectly fine no one said that it has to be one way <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean and, yeah and i mean people will say that too they're like oh you gotta you know the 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 rules or you know of what what yeah. you should do in your podcast and like yeah that maybe works for you <laughs> but I mean once you get you're doing something creative and you you dread doing it you that, you got to stop doing it like yeah. uh and you know, I don't want to get to that point I I cause I've gotten to that point doing many things and then I'll usually pick up you know some other whatever some other thing that I'm working on and um. I don't want to get to a point where it's like, oh god, I have to get this done. No, like, yeah, like even even this show. Uh, a while ago, um, I would do and and release a show like every Friday. I think I released every show every Friday at noon, but I do a whole bunch at a time, and then just you know, still like set to release them. But then I just got to be like, oh, I have to do this. Like, this isn't, it feels like a a chore and yeah. I'm not, not enjoying myself. And I, 
feel bad for the people that are coming on my show. And like, I'm like, well, I don't even want to be here doing this, but I feel like I have to do this. And so it's nice being like, yeah, I got to come on here and do this. And I, I'm set. Let's, let's have some fun. Let's go out and meet some people and talk to some people and enjoy it. But yeah, if you're not like, what can you do? Yeah, no, I, and I really agree with that. Also just the people that you, you like, you get to interview because then you get to stress about that as well. Oh, I need to find X, Y, C people because I need to, like release one you know everything just get like backed and yeah it just it's not it just doesn't feel the same and it kills the vibe and I think you can feel it as well if you are like uh leaning into it you can you can hear it and you can see it and you can sense it if if you're like in your mind going I'm over this like I don't even want to be here I don't want to have this conversation I like I need to move on. I have something else I want to do because I'm bored. You know, like you can yeah. feel it. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I, I got to go, uh, you know, wash the dog. I got to go wash the dog. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, you know, yeah. sit here and I'm going to go out and twiddle my thumbs because maybe that'll be more fun than what I'm doing or, <laughs> or something. And just yeah. like, okay, well, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I I took a good break. Like I was just, I was burnt out, and I'm like, I I can't do this anymore. It's not. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't enjoyable, and so I was like, okay, I'm I'm good. I can work on something else. But yeah, now I've got a good flow. I I release it when I feel like I want to release it. It's not like oh, it's Friday at noon. I better have something ready, and if not, I'm gonna put together something shitty and uh, just call it my episode. It's like 35 seconds. Oh, hey, you guys, just check it in. Uh, thought you guys might want to hear about me, uh, but I don't have anything to say. So, uh, all right, that's the show. See you next week. Like, oh. Yes, exactly. Like, you don't want to go there. But, but I think it's such a, like, uh, like a universal issue, that, or not issue, but like kind of, yeah, kind of issue or problem that a lot of people tend to do that. And we get carried away with what, society tells you what the norms tell you or just the people around you like we get caught up with rules that are not supposed to be there and that are not good for anyone but they're just there to be there right and it, yeah. yeah it ruins so much but we get caught I, I do it all the time as well I like I get caught up in something I'm like okay well it's supposed to be like that so I have to do it like that and then I'm like wait I don't have to do it like that because I don't want to do it like that. And that doesn't make sense to me, but I'm doing it. And that kills, you know, it just, it kills the creativity as well. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I mean, so then when, uh, I mean, do you, do you go to other creative things or, or do you just kind of have to go and block off from creativity? If you're stopped in one point of creativity, like if you're, you know, if you're doing your podcast and you're like, I can't do any more podcasts, do you go to writing or do you go to like, I'm going to sit and stare at the wall and watch paint dry for seven hours straight and see what happens? Um, Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because I have I have a, a lot of different things that I do um, when I need like a shift or like a change of environment or just something new or clean slate. Um, I used to do that only by meditating, but then meditation became that chore that I needed to do. Oh. And then that came my creativity. So that just spun off into something new. Um, so now I just, I really go with the flow. I have like, I don't know, five or 10 different things that I really enjoy doing and that gives me new energy and just, you know, lights me up um one of them being walking in nature um good race dancing I took up dancing again i used to dance when i was a a, a, a little kid i what took that up dancing? again that hip-hop hip-hop dancing okay yeah. are you like with a group of people then hip-hop dancing yeah. hip-hop dancing by your is it like a class yeah, it's a class. So I just joined a class in the city that I go to like every now and then when I need to like, you know, cut off from 
whatever is like on my mind or you know uh stuff like that that really gives me yeah you know it's it's like meditating because you're so focused on something that you cannot let your mind slip into something you should not be thinking about yeah uh just stuff like that and just uh spending a lot of time in nature I really enjoy enjoy that meditating uh writing is also one of them but I don't have a thing where I'm like okay it's we're going down this path so I need to do I'm always like I, I really I try to be like what do I feel like doing because something's off now do I want to go dancing do I want to go in the nature do I want to go for a run do I want to work out like and really go with that so it still energizes me and doesn't kill me uh, you know I, I, not literally <laughs> right yeah I mean like having that something to shut off your brain or even like you were saying with listening to an audio book while you're doing something else to kind of just get your brain focused on something else to be able to focus on something um, yeah which exactly yeah i mean yeah, it's some people some people can get away with doing one thing at a time and uh they're lucky in that sense, but then they're not lucky in the sense that they can not be able to, like you're saying, like be able to do this and turn all your attention to that, uh, turn all your attention to dancing and just let it go or, you know, be able to have the, the audio book going in your head and be able to you know, write or whatever it. Hey, what well, are, are you writing then when you listen to audiobooks or are you going and doing some other work or something or what's going on usually when i listen to audiobooks yeah um so either i am walking like i i just have like slow movement um just to like yeah move my body as well or i clean okay um That's yeah yeah it's a big help the big, big yeah, help yeah, having, yeah. yes something else some music or some sort of yeah uh, an audio book going when yeah doing yeah doing some cleaning and getting that going and so then uh then so what was your other part that you said you were uh when you're not doing your podcast, you said you have some other. Yeah, so um, I am a spiritual mental health coach. So I coach young adults in elevating their mental health. And I use a lot of different techniques and stuff like that. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and then I do workshops and then I do public speaking. And I collaborate with companies and schools and institutions uh so okay. so the podcasting was really more like a side part of it because I really like having these deep interesting conversations and you know yeah so I have a and lot so, lot of other and so then that's able to go and bring you know more are you having like conversations with other people that you're you're working with in those um like when you go and do public speaking are you going and interviewing those kinds of people or is it uh is it more people other people who are working with um you know helping out with yeah, I yeah. Forgot, me mental health or spiritual yeah, yeah health, exactly well -being. yeah like um for my podcast, it, it's not the the people I coach and it's not the people that I uh, teach. It's more people because, you know, speaking of like doing what lights you up or like doing what gives you energy and keeping it fun. I felt like I am helping these people and I'm giving a lot of like, you know, good tools and techniques, but I also need that person who can look me in the eye and, and have the kind of a like-minded conversation about the things that we do do you know what I mean them so, teaching too 
other yeah, teachers. Exactly. Other teachers, other like, and it doesn't have to be like at in the same field as me, but just um yeah, people who who have like the same kind of viewpoint and work like the the latest person I, I interviewed was uh, an astrologer. Okay. Which was really interesting because I get to learn a lot about her work and she the other way around and you know so it's more I don't know if it makes sense what I'm trying to say but it's more like that. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. And if you ever want a hypnotist uh, I, I know a guy uh, for your uh. show. Um, yeah. Let, let me know. I'll put you in touch with him. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so if you can use that. But so then where can everyone find you, find, be able to work with you, find your show, um, find whatever, whatever works you have that are in the internet world? Yeah. So my Instagram page pretty much holds a link to everything I do. Uh on Instagram, I'm Katrine Nomi. Um, and my podcast show is called Karmic Coaching with Katrine. Katrine Nomi, I actually think. Um, also have a web page, but it's all on my Instagram. So every link is there. So I really just suggest people going there if, if anything uh, piques their interest. Yeah. Does your web page link to your Instagram page? Or is it just... Uh, yeah, they all do, link to it each It just other. goes... Okay, yeah. Well, no, like when you yeah. go and you, you type in uh, your your name, the the website name. Um, yeah. Does it go like directly to your Instagram, or does it go to like your actual web page, and then you can link to your oh. Instagram through there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that goes to to my web page, and then you okay. can click the Instagram link from there. Yeah. Got you. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um. Well, yeah, Katrine, thank you so much for uh being on here i really enjoyed getting to talk to you and to meet you and not know what we we're going to talk about and get to where we got to get to and uh, i'm happy we did it so i uh, hope you have a great rest of your day and um yeah like i said if you uh, need a hypnotist uh you use a hypnotist on your show uh, let me know and yeah i'd be happy to do that yeah yeah no thank you so much for having me and thank you for a lovely conversation i really enjoyed it so yeah thank you you too. You're welcome. All right. Take care. All right. That's Katrine Nomi. So yeah, you guys hit her up, hit her up. I'll give you the ways to do it. I'm going to put it on there. There's going to be links. You don't even have to copy and paste it. You just click it. Well, it depends where you are. Some of them, they're going to be like, you can click it. Some of them you might have to do a copy and paste, but I'll make sure it's not too difficult. I know you guys are all smart. Everyone who's listening is smart. You're smart, so don't worry about it. It'll be there. It'll be there. And so thank you, everyone, here for listening here on the Quantum Global Broadcasting Network, QGBN. I am your host, Rusty Diamond, and that is the show, man. Boom. Boom. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Diamond motherfucker. Ernest. 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 <coughs> yes, Pee Wee. You brought the snacks, right?